I'm Leo Warder for Kit Guru, and this gaming laptop here is PC Specialist Vortex 6, and it is just about to run Gears of War 4 in 4K at Ultra settings. So as that kicks off and you watch the wonderfulness, let me tell you what is unusual about this uh, laptop, which is that it has a desktop Intel processor in it, uh, specifically a Core i7-6700K with a Z170 chipset. Now we've seen any number of high-end laptops in recent times with Intel processors, but they are always mobile processors. Now I'm gonna bring the microphone in so you can actually hear what I'm hearing, which is quite a lot of noise. This laptop is about performance, heat, power, and uh, basically pixels being pumped around the screen. I'll put the microphone over there, so it's quite a way away from, uh, from the game. Uh, so it's a 17.3 inch uh, chassis, it's a Clevo chassis, PC Specialist seems to use Clevo all the while, and uh, quite right too. 17.3-inch uh, uh, IPS panel matte finish rather than glossy screen. Really nice panel, and it's 4K. There is a version, as you can have this full HD if you like, but uh, 4K is no great amount of extra money, so why not? Powered by a pair of GTX 1080 graphics chips and that Core i7-6700K. Uh, it's one of these things, I'm not going to bother giving you numbers and such like, because we've got all the graphs on KitGuru. Uh, just to reiterate, this YouTube thing is part of what Kit Guru does. Head to our website, you'll see graphs, photos, and all sorts, uh, which is way more information than we can easily put on a video. Putting graphs on the screen is such a bore. Go to Kit Guru, look at the proper information. And right, that's finished. Uh, so the thing is that what we found with a number of uh, laptops and such like is that the uh, Intel uh, mobile chips, even though they're quite mighty beasts, when you're trying to get enough data through to power a pair of GTX 1080s, the chip, the, the processor, the CPU is the limiting factor. Uh, it's not when you have a single GPU, or not in my experience anyway. When you've got a pair of GPUs, it's a slightly different story. A pair of GTX 1080s, you need a decent desktop uh, processor to drive it along. Go and look at our graphs and you'll see that actually this laptop, even though the GPU performance appears to be slightly lower than the recent Titan that we reviewed, the uh, CPU performance pulls it right back. I'm just going to shut this down because it's actually rather rackety. So there we are back on the Windows desktop and that will continue howling away for a while. But uh, one of the features I quite like of this laptop is I don't like the fact it makes such a noise when it's under load, but that's almost inevitable. It's the fact the fan curve is quite sophisticated and it gradually eases down. As it gets cooler and cooler, it eases down. Above 60 Celsius, it really wants to be quite urgent. Um, when it gets below 50, it goes very quiet. 50 to 60, it's backing off. So at the moment, frankly, just by ear, I can tell you it's above 60 Celsius. So the hardware, 17.3 inch chassis, big, beefy, very heavy. The uh, bare chassis, bare laptop rather, 5.7 kilos, which is heavy. I mean, I picked the box up nearly fell over backwards. In addition, you've got two 330 watt power supplies. Each of those weighs 1.1 kilos. Basically the overall package is 8 kilos, which is one heck of a lot. Now, uh, in the past I've reviewed a Zeus GX700 and then I reviewed uh, a Zeus GX800. They are those uh, great big water-cooled things. I've also reviewed two or maybe three uh, MSI Titans and in each instance there's a sort of thing from the readers which is why are they so big? Why are they so bulky? Why have they got this ridiculous hardware? The answer is they produce an awful lot of heat. It has to go somewhere. Those uh, Azus liquid cooled laptops, they are a crazy size of mobile solution, but they work. The Titans are epically big in their 18.4 inch chassis. This by comparison is quite small. It's only 17.3 inch. It's a big beefy chassis and there is some heat going through it. Now, as you'll see on our close up videos and photos, there are three heat sink cooler setups inside this, one on the CPU, one on each GPU, three in total. Air goes in the bottom, exhausts out the back and there are two flattened heat pipes to each of those heat sinks. They, uh, the uh, setup works very well. It doesn't look quite as uh, extensive as some of the setups used by MSI Titan. They are colossal, colossal uh, cooling setups they use inside those laptops. But in this chassis, it makes perfect sense and it seems to work. The fact is there's so much power and heat going through the thing. As I say, two 330 watt power supplies for this setup. If you have uh, GTX 1070s, you can have two 230 watt power supplies. You know, one extra, extra 100 watts per brick for the two uh, 1080s, a significant amount of power. Uh, when the things under load looks for a number, 
it draws, in 3D Mark, it draws 460 watts. Now, when you consider 660 for the total, we are talking a significant percentage of the rated hole. So this is not, uh, this is not playing games. It's a serious amount of power and a serious amount of heat. Now, when I first got the system and I ran ADA 64 just to see what sort of temperatures it ran at inside, I was actually quite uh, concerned um, because the GPUs were ramping up uh, hot. Where's my figures? Uh, loaded 89 and 90 and the CPU was 95 and uh, once you get above 90 it'll start to uh, throttle and that didn't look at all good. Then I ran individually the CPU and the GPUs, stressed those to see how it worked and uh, that's now cooling down a little and I can hear it's getting slightly quieter and when I stressed just the GPUs and not the CPUs, the CPU is still sort of about 80 odd degrees. The GPUs were powering the cooling system. In games, it's a different story. The temperatures are much more reasonable. They're um, 80 odd degrees, uh, which is why the cooling system has to work so hard. It's keeping it the correct side of trouble, but it is keeping it with a decent safety margin, at least 10 degrees of safety margin. Uh, absolutely fine. So if you just do a synthetic stress test, problem. Play an actual game in the real world, no problem. And the performance is superb. Uh, I tested at both 1080 to give a comparison with various other uh, laptops we've used and then tested at 4K and it just storms along. Absolutely epic performance. Uh, interestingly enough actually Deus Ex, which is just a, a machine killer, at 4K with ultra settings, uh, average speed 33 frames per second so even this system can't play Deus Ex just cranks to the max it uh, does make you wonder every other game it stormed along it was, it was just lovely to behold and now the fans are ramping down it will get quieter still but uh, it's nicely nicely uh, I did hit uh, one snag well couple of snags. When I was uh, running the system I fired up Gears of War 4 just as I did with that benchmark there and I got a message on the screen saying that uh, graphics driver 372.54 has compatibility problems with Gears of War 4 so I thought fair enough I'll install the latest uh, Nvidia driver. GTX 1080 mobile same as GTX 1080 uh, desktop no problem at all and the driver wouldn't install and I thought oh goodness me don't tell me that Clevo's put a bias lock on the thing oh no 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 went off to Clevo's website the driver there's a couple of versions old that was no good to me uh, did a bit of research and turns out it's the current Nvidia driver that's the problem put in the previous uh, which is one version newer than the laptop came with 375.95 it was absolutely fine so i hit a snag i've done some screen grabs they'll be on kit guru but the problem was very much nvidia's driver not clevo not pc specialist not the game for that matter uh, performance absolutely fine the spec of the thing is epic keyboard good actually the touchpad i'm not mad keen on you touch it it goes all over the shop i've been using a usb mouse uh, just to save myself from going to frustration. Uh, that I don't like much. Whether that's a problem with the hardware or whether it's a driver that can be sorted out remains to be seen. That I don't like. Everything else I like a lot. Uh, ports and connectors. On this side I've got two USB Type C's, uh, Thunderbolt 3 card reader, a USB 3 regular and two mini display port. That side we've got a bunch of headset jacks. We've got USB 3.0s, 3.1s. On the back I've got an HDMI and a USB 3. That's getting nice and quiet now. Again, photos on Kit Guru. Uh, all the ports and connectors, ultra, ultra, bang up to date, exactly what you want. Uh, it is an epic laptop that actually shows that what you want in your gaming laptop is a desktop processor. The problem is you get a load of heat. They're 91 watt TDP. You need power to drive the graphics chips and the processor and the consequence is you get heat, you have to cool the thing, you get noise. There's, there's just no way of dealing with that. Um, and then the fact they put a 4K panel on it is actually secondary because of all these outputs you can easily connect to your big TV. The question is do you want a 1080 panel on the laptop, which would be okay actually, or do you want 4K, well why the heck not, you're paying a, well the price is £3,600. Uh, but you're paying a fortune, you might as well go for the Max. Uh, Windows 10 scaling is pretty good with a 4K panel. It looks nice. It's now nice and quiet. And it's a success. 
Uh, in a way, for me, this has actually been more of a scientific experiment than anything. Uh, the question of does a desktop processor actually remove the bottleneck that you get with a mobile processor, I think the answer is yes indeed. Does it work well if you switch to a desktop processor? Hell yes. Uh, does it make sense to do it? Hmm. That's a matter of opinion. I mean, it, this is a mobile solution, no two ways about it. The fact you can park the thing out, put to your TV, put on some headphones, brilliant. Lugging around eight kilos of laptop and two power bricks, not great, but frankly, a lot easier than, uh, than Titan or certainly than those water-cooled uh, Asus laptops, so fair enough. Uh, there is the obvious snag, which is that we know that Skylake is coming to the end of its days and that Kaby Lake is any day now. Uh, we are well aware that there will be updates. So whether this precise laptop is the one to get or whether you wait a very short time and you buy it, well, whether it be called Vortex 7 or Vortex 6 and a half, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would have thought the cost would be the same. I would have thought the performance would be the same. It's just that thing of, I might as well have the newest thing. Uh, so that's a slight unknown. Uh, but this laptop is a... Triumph, and after my initial apprehension about temperatures, been completely laid to rest. The noise is a problem because there's nothing else you can do apart from making the thing that much thicker. But what are you going to do? Uh, a great success, a fabulous gaming experience, a brilliant laptop. Love it to bits. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru, and this finally quiet laptop is PC Specialist Vortex 6.